The Me Too movement has brought sexual assault and domestic violence into the public conversation in a way that's unprecedented. Harvey Weinstein, charged with rape and sexual assault. And one of the most important things that's happened with the Me Too movement is it's not just shined a spotlight on perpetrators like Harvey Weinstein, but also the people around those men and the role that they have played in participating in the culture that produces this abusive behavior. There's also an entire culture that supports yeah. Telling yeah. them to be quiet and silent. How do you get the change of the silent bystander to move into that engaged bystander? And in fact, it's important to remember that one of the most important developments in the field of gender violence prevention over the past quarter century has been this focus on the bystander. But it's really important to note that there are different approaches to how you work with the bystander. And it's crucial to think about these differences because they matter. As part of an experiment on bystander apathy, Peter's pretending to be ill. How long before he gets help? When people hear the word bystander, they think about how people don't act when they see someone in duress on the streets. We'll examine the bystander effect and why it may have led people to just walk on by. There's at least 10 individuals that are standing around watching this and no one is intervening. But the problem with talking about the bystander effect is that that has to do with strangers seeing something happening to strangers on the street. When we talk about the bystander approach, we're not talking about strangers on the street. We're talking about known peer cultures. We're talking about when they're in peer cultures where they know people, why don't they act? Two high school football Football stars from Steubenville, Ohio, sexually assaulted a visibly intoxicated 16-year-old girl. How could so many all-American kids stand by and let this happen without anyone calling for help? And the reason why, generally speaking, why people don't act in their own peer culture is not because of their physical fear, it's because of their social fear. Hey, let's go grind on some whores, bro. When a young guy doesn't speak up and challenge his friend who's just made a sexist joke, it's not because he's worried about getting assaulted. It's because they're afraid of the social consequences, that they might be seen as soft, that they might be seen as not being one of the guys. Somehow their status within the peer culture might be affected. Be cool and be kind of a dick. Always keep your mind. Nobody likes a tattletale. Bros come before home. So the question was, how can we change the peer culture support for abusive behavior, the kind of ways in which guys goad each other on, the way that guys enable each other's abusive behavior, but in particular, the way that men who don't support abusive behavior remain silent in the face of it. How does that silence function as consent and complicity in the abusive behavior? That's the bystander approach.